Hey guys, welcome to LG Overdrive. This is episode 12. This is the Calder Cup Finals preview show. I'm the host, The Young Buck. With me today, I have First Alignin. What's up, everybody? Also with me, I have Notorious Fat. Sorry if the baby makes any noise. And last but not least, I have I'm Phases. I mean, it's Mackie now, thank you. Oh, it's Mackie now. Sorry. Uh, as obviously you can't tell, we do not have Dudley. I think he's still dying of disappointment and embarrassment from his bench games. Um, Salty Sailor, I think he is too pissed off after his uh, game of Saturday Night Puck tonight. And uh, last but not least, I think uh, Fourth Line is currently tying himself a noose or something. He's hiding somewhere after uh, losing in the uh, conference finals. He's not here as well. But speaking of that, uh, we're going to send it over to uh, Notorious, who's got a little bit of more insight, possibly why Fourth Line is not here tonight. Yeah, when I, I heard uh, Evan, a.k.a. Uh, fourth Line Worthy, was not going to be on the show, I uh, quickly threw together a little top five reasons why he's not on the show this week. And why he hasn't been on the show, I guess, many weeks now. So, uh, without further ado, number five, he couldn't find his pants. Oh, never mind. He found them. His girlfriend was wearing them. <laughs> no, number four, cleaning his fish tank. Yeah, sounds about right. Number three, as Buck said, he's learning to tie a noose. <laughs> number two, he's currently taking some night CPR courses, you know, for all the choking. <laughs> and number one, He's busy planning which mm -hmm. NHL team he's going to bring to the President's Trophy only to disappoint in the playoffs. Uh, that's a little harsh, that last one there. I don't know. Went right at him, huh? <laughs> oh, wow. Just fun. Five straight shots. Just bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry, um, no, no, no. To be fair, he does deserve it. He hasn't been here for like a month now. We gave him a little bit of uh, heck for it earlier. Uh, and now Risto obviously took him out of the conference finals after he was supposed to just demolish and dismantle Tucson. And we're actually going to go into that and uh, bring it on to the uh, the Calder finals. We have Tucson, who took out Rockford in five games, at, versus Rochester, who took out Providence in six games. But we'll talk about the uh, Rockford and Tucson series first. Obviously, I just said Tucson won in five games. Uh, a couple of games, obviously, were going to overtime. But I'll let uh, Risto talk about that series since it's his team. All right, yeah. Um, well, going into it, we knew he was going to have a good team. I talked about that in the previous show. But it ended up being very close to my, even if it is only five games. Two of the game three and four were in overtime. Uh, Augie played out of his mind in that game, as well as the forwards and defensemen in both those games, three and four. And then uh, the other two, game two and five, were also close games. So there's, it just could go, it could have went either way, but uh, we ended up taking them out. And we, were, we were definitely happy for it. Most of the community wasn't necessarily rooting for us, so it was nice to pull out the upset, I guess you'd call it. Oh, you say like, that the community wasn't rooting for you. I think they're all rooting for you now, though. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. The way uh, Nabby conducts himself in the shop box is uh, it's not something to root for sometimes. And na not even Nabby. Maybe maybe someone just wants an upset. Who knows? We'll see what happens. The yeah, community voting much. for that series is currently 43 votes for Tucson, 31 for Rochester. Oh, wow. So, don't you know, I guess playing in the worst division in the league turns out to be... The benefit because no one knows what to expect from you yeah i don't know if it's not what they expect it's like, it's not like we didn't beat good teams during the season but i don't know i'll take it though shit you're from the, you're from the you, shitty pacific are you, you mean like good teams like stockton because yeah. uh stockton almost made the playoffs yeah i'm not saying the teams in our division were good or bad i was talking about the other divisions we played <laughs> it's okay to say we were good risto it's okay you guys, you guys were good thanks there you go all right, so we spoke a little bit about that series. I'll let Mackie talk a little bit about the Rochester Providence series. Uh, it was a very back and forth series. Um, game six ended up being a one goal game. That's kind of a heartbreak for Providence. If they won seven, I think they would have. Seven given, periods. 
Seven fucking periods, yeah. Like, it took seven overtimes. That's pretty awful, especially since it was Raw Providence's first line against the Death Star. Really and he won that game himself. He faced 30 fucking shots. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rochester had 14, 15, 16 shots that whole game. No, they had 14 shots the whole game. Providence had 30. And yeah. Providence had 15 minutes of time on attack to Providence, or to Rochester 7, so... Yeah, apparently they dominated that game. They, the reason why they won looking the at the stats, literally Providence dominated. Face-off wins... Penalty minutes are way better. Time on attack, shots. Like the only category they lost in was hits. And goals. And goals, clearly. Wins. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but it sucks for them because that was like their first line. That was their three headed, whatever they like to call it. So losing with that line in you know, a fucking seven period game. I, yeah, I, would say, no, I would say Providence was the real surprise of these playoffs. Like, I think oh, absolutely. absolutely. No, nobody had Providence picked, right? And uh, they surprised a lot of people. Like, they took two guys, uh, started with the goaltenders that I don't think anyone really had any faith in. They played amazing all, all through the, the the playoffs and carried them, really, as far as they did. Um, you know, props to those guys. You, you guys all did a great job in Providence. Nothing to hold your head down about. You should be proud. You guys had a great season. If you want to know how much of an underdog they were, nine people voted for them in the first round. And only eight, 19 voted in the second round. In the third round, they went down to 12, but they were underdogs the whole playoffs. Yep. Yeah. I had their back. I didn't vote. I didn't do any voting, but I had their back. They were definitely a team that surprised me as well. Like, start, they fell off the wagon, I think, towards the end of the season, in the regular season, and then ended up coming out pretty big and making it to the conference finals, which is, I'd say they can't hang their heads about that whatsoever. I guess Providence could be a little happy that Nightmare and his team choked at the last week of the season. A little bit. Um, I think someone on Hershey said it best, though. Providence played real NHL 17 hockey. So, I mean, they played right into the game. They didn't try and do shit that they knew didn't work on this fucking game because it's a piece of shit. Took the tools yeah. they were given and used them properly. Exactly. They played exactly like this game needs to be played for it to be good. And that's that's smart. Good for them. Good yeah, that's smart. Sorry, sorry. So now moving on to the finals, we have Rochester obviously being Eastern Conference champions, but they also were the regular season Eastern Conference champions, facing against uh, Tucson, who was the Pacific Division champions, and now obviously Western Conference champions. Um, Notorious, give a little insight on this series. Uh, you know, here's here's my thing with uh, with Rochester. Rochester to me is. Let's, let's say they're a human, okay? So all the players that are on that team make up different parts of the body, right? So you have, like, arms and legs and, you know, body and head and all that kind of stuff. And you have an asshole. So you, uh -huh. you, can, figure out, you can figure out where that is. And unfortunately for them, it oh. seems like they've got some kind of really bad anus cancer. Like, it's just ripe. Right with cancer up in their ass, right? Like, I don't know if there's enough radiation to fucking flush that shit out. So they've got a problem uh, with image, I would say. They've got some great players on that team. Like, you know, I always talk about goaltending, but that's kind of what I watched this year. I watched the goaltender. So you got Ballsy and uh, shit, I'm going to be Banks. Thank you, Banks. Sorry, Banks. Those are the two legs of the team. Those guys, yeah, you guys are legs, and you're like fucking jacked up. 80s Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator kind of legs. Huh. Those are fucking nice legs, okay? But then you got you got that problem in the pooper, you know, and it's 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 uh, it's everywhere. It's in the chat box, it's in the forums, it's on the ice, it's in your party, it's just cancer all over the place. So it's really hard to get behind them, even though they are a really good team. Um, so I, I think that's going to really hurt them. Um, and it, it's got to be a distraction. It's got to be a problem. Just like... Uh, Mackie and uh, Tatar in uh, in Hartford this year. That, that fighting cause that must have been horrible for them. I uh, never gonna let it die. <laughs> but goalie uh, controversy. It's a huge hashtag goalie controversy. Uh, and then if you look over across uh, at the west, there you got Tucson and Risto. They're kind of uh, last year. I talked a lot about the uh, the black hat cowboys and the white hat cowboys. Tucson's your white hat cowboy. You know, these guys are fresh, clean. 
coming in their bright little uh, white suit, you know, riding in on their white horse. And uh, and I think everybody's going to be in their corner and really cheering for them, you know, really wheeling them on to get that Calder. Uh, I don't know if they are uh, player for player better uh, than, uh, than Rochester, but they are going to be the sentimental favorite, I think, for sure. Um, what I, I, go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. No, what I see in this series is uh, Rochester brings a lot of the depth when it comes to goal scoring and goal tending, as where Tucson brings a lot of defensive forwards and defensive play that end goal tending. So they got like the less scoring, but they got the defensive that'll counterbalance against Rochester's high scoring offense that they do have. Yeah, if you, if you go goalie for goalie on the two teams, I think you just. You wipe that out because uh, PHJ and Ranger are up to the task as well. Those guys have proven it all through the season, and now in the playoffs, they're playing some of their best hockey, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it was a clear favorite in in the pipes, but uh, you know, in in the medical terms, you know, if you have cancer and you don't have cancer, you know, pick pick the guy who doesn't have cancer, especially if he's in the anus. Mackie, you were going to say something about. Nah, it's fine though. Really Why not? I'm saying ass and cancer and anus and <laughs> all these things. You, you could probably can't do worse than that. I think the Brody line, they play NHL 17 hockey just like Providence did. So they could possibly steal games. So I know that's probably the third line, right, Vista? Yeah. Yeah, they could potentially steal games just because it's Brody. I think they could already done it. They They've already done, done it, yeah, because they, they play Rockford twice. They play That's they they Rockford yeah. twice in game two and game five. You know, their third line. I only have one hand here, sorry. I'm not doing something terrible with the other hand. Uh, their third line stole two games. Yeah, That's they play until they play good. Brody, Titus gave me shit for losing to Brody in the regular season, but he's he's a decent player. Like, he does shit you shouldn't do in any fucking actual game of hockey. But it works. A game changer. He probably does some like coding shit to change the game. Yeah, he's You're got right. a special button on the controller. He's You're a right. game changer. <laughs> yeah. So Risto, talk about the series a little bit here before we go into predictions. Um, I think it's another one of those Rockford series like last series where, except for their, minus the whole uh underdog, not necessarily underdog, but the whole community against us. For the most part, like that Rockford series where the voting was more lopsided towards Rockford, this one's a little bit different, but it's still going to be tough. And I'm going to say the same thing I said last week. You got it. We just got to play our game, and it's possible. It was possible versus Rockford, and we did it. So you just never know. Do you find line matching is something that you find really important in this series compared to some of the other series that you played? We didn't have it versus Rockford. I don't think we're going to need it versus uh, Rochester either. Fair enough. Do so you guys feel you have three equal lines that can do the job no matter what? Yeah. So you're saying you're one A, one B, one C. I feel like one A is definitely a little bit step above with the Semp line just because they also have the connection advantage. But yeah, they do. Well, Semp and them are fucked. They got the chemistry. Everyone they played. They have the, the chemistry. Season. They got the West Coast like. Semp's always gonna be a little bit better. Semp's Semp's the only one West on that line. He doesn't host the game, so. Yeah, but Sam's also one of the better players on that line, so. Yeah, it's so good. Was nominated for MVP last season. Yeah, if I want somebody who has a better connection than everybody else in the game in that lineup, it's going to be Sam. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be an exciting thing. series, though, I think. That's something yeah. I can talk about for sure, though, is the connection real quick. With that Rockford series, we played, obviously, KSP and then played twice home. That's how they always use, or usually always run. I think they did all season, but... um. The one we lost to him was five to three, and there was some bad bounces. And it is what it is. You take a loss and you run with it. So you just got to do what you got to do. But in this last, next one, we had some high ping, but it wasn't anything too crazy. And I don't think connection should be the reason you win or lose. Yeah, you yeah you can complain about the connection, and it sucks when it's slow. That's a hundred percent facts that it sucks when it's slow. But that just okay. shows there that anyone when you, can win the game. When you play on the West Coast, when you're usually East Coast, they play. It takes like maybe a period to adjust to it. Yeah, as long as you're not just sitting there bitching about it, it's me a good period. Honestly, when I play, I played that KSP line when we won the last, the fourth game, or I guess fifth. I, I didn't notice too much of a slowness because, but I did check my network performance and it was a little bit higher than usual. 
honestly, the way that KSP line plays, it let me adjust to it because they like doing their corner cycling, whatever kind of moves you do. A lot of teams do that, I think. And that gives you kind of some time to sit back, be patient, and let them do their thing. And I think that helps a little bit. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of forwards do that. That's what I said about their team. They're going to lose eventually because that's what they do. They go to the corner and then they try and find somebody open. And good teams aren't going to let you sit there and find somebody open. They're not going to chase you to the corner. They're just going to cover the other four guys. They're going to be fucked. Cover the lanes. Exactly. Yeah, we knew that going into the game. I literally said that's one of the main things I said is that we're gonna not gonna get we're not gonna win on time and attack versus any Rockford line hardly other than maybe that Arscog line, which I don't know if we even did with that. But we got our time and attack like a lot versus uh KSP line in game five, but that's because they do their things in the corner. It it, it works for a lot of people, like it works for them all season. Obviously they're a good team, but it just stopped there. That's what I said. I said in like week six and Waltz and someone else got really mad at me, but apparently it was true. What you gonna do? So, incoming message I actually found out right now. Thank you to Augie32. That fourth line is actually playing club with the boys in Rockford. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Suddenly got some internet, eh, buddy? <laughs> I thought he wasn't home. Yeah, I thought he wasn't home either, but uh, apparently Saturday Night Puck brings priority with the boys. Yeah, boy. Shout out to Augie for that uh, mind-blowing discovery. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Season's over. You can do whatever the fuck you want now. Uh, <laughs> What's he going to do, Benji? <laughs> so moving on now. Um, to let the whole community know, uh, we're actually uh, done with the voting for awards as of the time of the show started. Uh, we're going to be doing a show next week, uh, releasing the winners of each and every one of the awards that we voted on, including obviously the Calder Cup champs and all the other trophies that you win during the regular season that are team based and points based and goal scoring, like that are already been guaranteed because it's based off statistics but the ones that we voted for the six awards mvp best goalie best defensive board best demon uh gm of the year and most sportsman like will be released next sunday on another and final overdrive show so look forward to that because we've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks going through the numbers going through games and looking who's played who and like picking out various winners um when we do release it i'm gonna release like this guy was finished third in voting second and then the winner that way you have a little bit more of an in-depth thought process on that but give you a couple of bullets to put in your gun when you're shooting at us yeah i have an update on the fourth line situation uh yes. breaking Augie, news this is this is breaking news uh, a message from fourth line himself augie is aids i'm not playing club <laughs> <laughs> Uh, classic. <laughs> oh, we love you, Augie, and we love you, Fourth Line. We just wish you were here. <laughs> I just need the fish tank in my life. I want a fish tank in my life too. Fish tanks for everybody. You got a fish. Oh, you get a fish. You got a tank. I for for the <laughs> I'm buying everybody right. a fish. Now, we actually, I'm going to send it over to Mackie. He's got a specific and special segment he wants to do tonight. Special segment due to uh, only having a top five uh, and Dudley's wonderful presence being missing from Overdrive tonight. Um, I've decided to announce that this is going to be the last media show I basically ever do. Um, and in typical Overdrive fashion, I'm going to do that with the top 10 reasons of why Faces or Mackie is no longer going to be on the media shows. Number 10. Oh, wait, 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 before we start, before we start, are you just, are you still going to be part of the media team or are you leaving the show? I will be part of the media team. I'll be helping behind the scenes with the editing. Um, I'll be streaming all my games, probably making it more interactive, but I'll still be here. I'm not quitting LG, I'm not quitting the media team. I'm just not going to be on the show anymore. That's definitely going to be a rumor. You're Something quitting. tells me there's some, a lot of plastic surgery coming up here. <laughs> I'm going to come back on as fourth line. 
gender reassignment. Oh God. <laughs> He's gonna go. He's gonna go from Mackie to Mackenzie. <laughs> there you go. That's reason ten right there. I'm going from Mackie to Mackenzie. <laughs> That's why his gamer tag changed. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Chris. So, without further ado, the top ten reasons why I am leaving media shows. Number ten. Fourth line refuses to show up when I'm around now. Number nine, oh, the four, number nine, the fourth line superstition has got to me and I'd like to win sometime in the next five years. <laughs> number eight, I'm retiring to start full-time in SMP dominating people. <laughs> number seven, Rochester filed a formal complaint to get me off the show because I hurt their feelings too much. Snowflakes! <laughs> number six, Buck told me I couldn't drink and be on the show to avoid a Darcy Kemper situation. Number five, my pitch for the Rose 2.0 was denied. Number four, Sorry, I'm going to devote more time to trolling the few remaining beta sisters. <laughs> Number three, Nabby took most of my energy away from media. Fucking cunt. <laughs> Number two. That's a duck. Number two, here comes another duck. Number two, LG won't let me call anyone a re- even if they are one. And the number one reason why I'm leaving media shows is you bunch of pussies don't deserve media. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, Dudley, top that. <laughs> He's got a week. He's got a week to think about it. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, man. That, that, that's a really extensive and very intense list that I was not expecting, actually. <laughs> How else did you expect I mean, me to say goodbye? Come on. I mean, true, you are an asshole, so it makes sense. Now, are you actually going to wreck kids in SMP, or are we just going to get first round like we always do? Uh, I haven't played SMP a single time yet, so I don't know. You're just on teams that, that put you as a substitute because they want yeah. you as a goalie? I'm not even home when teams do that, let's be honest. That's very right here. So, without further ado, um... Do you, any of you guys have any shout-outs before we close off the show for this week? Whoa, we can't close off the show. We can't close off the show? What do you mean we can't close off the show? We haven't done predictions. Oh. He's got a point. Predictions, predictions I mean, for the Calder. I thought we all just hated Rochester, so I thought I we thought were just... I thought it was a given. I guess Mackie's got his written on his little bar there in front of him, or at least he did. I did. I changed it, you know, okay. because I'm such a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Should Should I start? No, ah, start it. It's your idea. Right. Well, it's not really my idea. It's kind of what we do, right? I, I, I don't <laughs> want to judge involved. people. That's what we do. Okay. I, I just want them to get mad and make them think that we hate them. No. Oh. Well, uh, there there is the uh, the talk floating around the LG that uh, there is a notorious curse. Uh, it's probably somewhat true. I haven't looked into the stats of it, but apparently teams that I pick tend to uh, fuck up and lose. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why that is. Maybe I just pick bad teams. Maybe teams are intimidated by the, the pick of Notorious. I don't know. But uh, Straight up fuck up. Yeah, it's, it's, a real, it's a real tough one for me here because I definitely have a team I want to win. And I have a team I don't want to win. And I don't want the team that I don't want to win to take it personally because it's not personal. So, you know, I've been told I should abstain from making a choice. I won't because that's not what we're here for, okay? We're here to make choices, we're here to make, uh, forge opinions, put it out there, and then take all the heat and just eat it up because we're heat eaters. But uh, so I'm going to go with my pick as Rochester. Oh, interesting. In six. Okay. Now, I got to ask, is that because you want Tucson to win, or are you choosing Rochester? I've said too Rochester? much. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right, we'll go over to Mackey then. Um, because I just – I'm choosing because I hate the team that I want to lose because that's what we've done every week when it comes to the Eastern Conference. So my official pick is Tucson in five games. All right. Dum, dum, dum. I don't even care that your team's playing, Risto. You're still making a prediction this time. 
No, I'm good. <laughs> Smart choice last time I did that. <laughs> but comes in pool. You're going to do this. No, nah, I'm good. No. Nah. I'll talk about the series, but I ain't doing fucking shit for predictions. Buck tried to put the foot down. Grizzle says, get your fucking foot off me. <laughs> Buck's only like three years older than me. There's no foot down here. Oh, God. I might be 17, but. <laughs> well, I'll just send a Taurus out for you. Yeah. All right. First snack garage coming up. He is old enough to be my dad, so. Yep. It's a good uh, on your grandpa, actually. Probably. <laughs> Two sorry, right. four. Four? Jesus, Buck. Fuck. Fucking sweep? You crazy? <laughs> yeah, I don't even think. won't score. That's, wow. a little, that's your bold one. Wow. Okay. Um, so if this does happen, Buck's the greatest of all time, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Hey, if, if it comes true, Mackie's back again. Oh, baby. If this happens, if Rochester doesn't score a single goal, I'll be back next week, and I'll be back a uh, minimum five shows next season. Book it! Damn. I'm writing it down. Give me a pen. Uh, it's a video, Buck. Just gone. save it. Yeah. <laughs> Just save the video. It's going on the site. <laughs> forever. This is forever. Oh, no. If there are four straight shutouts by Tucson, I'll come back. Interesting. PHJ, Ranger, watch the show. Please do it. Hey, they're probably watching right now, to be honest, or one of them is. Book it. Anyways, um, yeah, any closing comments, any shows for you guys before we actually head out this time? Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, I got one. Okay. All right, so this one goes out to... Nabby and the boys. Uh, I'm just gonna say good luck in the series, and uh, we're coming for him for sure. All right. That's all I got. Mac That's Gage and board material right there. Boo -boo. <laughs> uh, no shout outs. I think I shout out everybody. I mean, shout out to everybody who finished the season, didn't quit like a bunch of bitches. Sure. Also, I have a message from Rico. She says, "Faces, we're gonna miss you." Oh. Rico. Rico always watches these shows. He should get a shout out. Shout out to Rico for watching the show. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he's Ooh, been on like, yeah. I think he's watched every single one live almost. He has. All right, Notorious. Uh, I'm going to shout out uh, Fourth Line Worthy because uh, I think he's feeling a little sad right now. He's feeling a little down. We may have ripped on him a little bit this show, maybe in the uh, little group meet chat we got going on here with the media. But hey, we love you, buddy. We just want you back. That's all. We want you to be a part of this. All right? I hope club was worth it. Here, here I'll give you a virtual hand job. There you go, buddy. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> just happened? Your daughter's next to you. <laughs> he feels better now. He's happy. Uh, Mitch Price's daughter's sleeping next to him. He's doing this. Ah, she's fine. She's fine. All right. And I got to do my final shout out. I'm going to send it to my, uh, give a shout out to my boy, Br Br Breezy, Semp, and Lorenzo. Um, I'm still going, saying you're losing both again this series because it seems to be you guys for every series. So, uh, you guys are losing both again. Um, so, yeah. If he doesn't watch the show, I'll relay that message during a, a banana leaf. Well, they always watch it, so one of them does. Anyways, without further ado, uh, good luck to Tucson and Rochester in the Calder Cup Finals. We'll catch you guys next week with the Calder Cup Finals. Um, obviously, it'll be over, so we'll be announcing the winner. And then all the awards uh, next week, so it'll be the awards show next week. Catch you guys next week, then.